Hello and welcome to a brand new track of Bible classes. We are so excited to be expanding the Building Blocks course of studies into your Sunday and Wednesday classes. You're going to hear much more about that. There's a whole team of us who are working on it. But for now, can you open your Bible? Find with me Matthew chapter 16. You're going to need a Bible. Every time we gather for a Bible class, you're going to need a Bible. And this month, we're asking a really important question. What is the church? If someone were to ask you that, how would you answer that question? The way this is always going to work is I or someone else, we're going to have a, a, a video study where we really want you to have your Bible open and follow along with us. You've got an interactive worksheet on the left-hand side of that. I'm going to cover this material, and then once this video is done, your teacher in your classroom is going to talk with you about what we learned together and how it applies to you. You, even at your age, especially at your age, you need to know what is the church. And I want to kick off this brand new series for the month in Matthew chapter 16. Is your Bible open there? Read with me verse 18 where Jesus the amazing Son of God made a great promise. Do you see in Matthew 16, verse 18, I tell you, this is Jesus talking, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That was a promise of Jesus. I will build my church. Now, can you see on your worksheet just beneath that, Ephesians chapter 1. This is just a few years later. The Apostle Paul is writing a letter to the church in Ephesus. And by the time he writes what we have as Ephesians chapter 1, Jesus had fulfilled his promise. He had established his church. Notice the language in Ephesians 1, verses 22 and 23. We're talking about God the Father, and God put all things under his. God the Father put all things under the feet of Jesus and gave him as head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Notice, it's not in the future tense. God is eventually going to put all things under Jesus' feet. No, he has. He had done that by the time Paul wrote his letter to the Ephesians. The church is the body of Jesus Christ. But what is the church? We know Jesus promised it. We know Paul talks about it as if it had been established. But what is it? You can see on the day that I filmed this, I'm outside of the church building. You come here all the time, right? But you know that's not the church. You need to remember that. That's just the building in which we gather. And so when we talk about the church, what are we talking about? You probably know that your Bible, even though you're reading it in English, this wasn't originally written in English. The New Testament was written in the Greek language. And the word that we have in English as church is from a Greek word, ekklesia. Do you see how that's spelled on the screen? Ekklesia. That's a Greek word that we have translated into English, church. And all that 
ecclesia means is called out. It doesn't even have to have a religious meaning. It just means an assembly of people or a congregation of people. The church is Jesus's called out people. You know what that means, right? That, that idea of being called out. If you're in a school building and there's a bell that goes off at 2 or 2.33, whenever you get out of school, that bell goes off and you are being called out out of school, called by that bell to come out of school and go home. That's the meaning of the word church. Maybe you remember from school or you've been in a, a business building, maybe Target or something, and a fire alarm goes off and you are called out, called by that fire alarm out of that building. That's this word. Jesus's church is a group of called out people. Now, called how? Called by who? Called why? Called where to? Can you find your in your Bible 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, toward the end of your Bible, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I want to read with you verse 14, how God's people are called by the gospel. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14. To this he called you, that's the church, to this he called you. We're not talking about a building, we're talking about people. To this he called you. Well, what did he use to call? Through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus' church is a group of called out people. Called by what? Not by a fire alarm called by the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's go back in our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2, even closer to the end of the Bible. 1 Peter chapter 2, can you find verse 9? 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Notice what Peter writes. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called, called you. Jesus' church is a group of called out people. Well, what are we being called out of and into? Look at the end of the verse. He called you out out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, in your class, your teacher is going to explore that with you. What is this darkness that we're being called out of? For right now, what I want you to see is, this is easy to understand. We're called by the gospel, called out of darkness and into the light. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1 and verse 7 says to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. L let's put all of this together. We're called by the gospel, called out of darkness into light, called to be saints. We'll talk as this study unfolds about what a saint is, it's, it's someone different from the world. It's someone who's living for God. In the next book of the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9, Paul says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son. 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus wants a relationship with you. You're being called out of the darkness of sin into a relationship with Jesus. Can you find in your Bible Colossians chapter 3, toward the end of the Bible, Colossians chapter 3, and I want to read with you verse 15. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. The Apostle Paul says, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. It's not that men are called into one gathering and women are called into a different or people with one color of skin are over here and people of a different color of skin are over here. No, we're called by the gospel out of darkness into light, called to be saints, called to have a relationship with Jesus in one body, his church. One more along these lines, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. Can you find that? Almost at the very end of your Bible, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10, where Peter says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. God wants you to live a certain way here, but he's calling you to eternal glory. What is the church? That's what we're going to be asking this month. And I want to summarize everything that we've said with one more verse. Can you find the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28? Jesus had lived, he had died, he had been buried, and he rose again. And before he ascended back to his Father in heaven, in Matthew 28, I want to begin reading with you in verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18, where Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples. People who are followers. Now this Wednesday, we're going to dig into what exactly is a disciple? What's it mean to be a disciple of Jesus today? Where we're ending our video Bible study for this weekend is right here. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. What's the church? The church is people. People who have answered the call of the gospel to leave sin behind. I'm coming out of darkness into the light so that I can be a disciple of Jesus Christ. We're so excited for this study. We're excited for this entire Building Blocks program. We're excited that you've started gathering with us once again in Bible classes. We love our Bible classes and our Bible class teachers. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to them. I'll see you again this Wednesday. Mm -hmm.